He's going to turn it on. Good morning. We are going to go ahead and get started with Bible class. So if you're still in your conversations, we're going to ask you to either join us in class or go, uh, move to the hallway. Amen? I hope that was, you know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> good morning, everyone in the balcony. Everybody say good morning to the balcony. Good morning, you guys. We're going to start Bible class. All right. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. All right, and good morning to those of you who are at home watching. My name is Jasmine, and I am one of the ministers here at uh, North Atlanta Church of Christ. I am grateful to be here and have this opportunity uh, to share with you this morning. Uh, we're going to talk about, as you guys know, we have been uh, on different prodigals, I mean, on different parables, and today we're going to talk about the parable of the prodigal son. And one thing that I do know is that just about everyone in here has heard of the parable of the prodigal son or know something about it, might be the prodigal son or something to that nature, amen? I want to also introduce Marley. Marley is here. She is going to uh, read for me. She's going to read for us this morning, and then uh, this is going to be an interactive class. Amen? So, if you have something to say, Marley is going to kindly walk the microphone over to you uh, so that everyone at home can hear you as well. All right? All right. So, the first thing I want to do before we get started is I'm just going to say a really quick word of prayer. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we love you, we praise you, and we magnify your holy name, O oh God. God, we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory, God, and we invite you into this room. We invite you into our homes, God, and we say less of us and more of you, less of me, less of Marley, God, and more of you. God, have your way this morning. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. So... The two words that I want you to really keep in mind throughout this whole lesson is source, source, and access. Say source, source. and access. All right. We're going to go ahead and get started reading. Um, Marley, will you go ahead and read 11, verses 11 and 12? And yes, we're in Luke 15. If you're at home, you can go to Luke 15, and we're going to read verses 11 through 32, but if you would read uh, Luke 15, 11 and 12. All right, 11, Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger, said, the younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Okay, so right off the bat here, when we think about the son who left home, that's what we think about automatically. When he said, Father, give me my share. So think about where he was living. His, son was, his father was a king. He had everything he needed. Everything he needed, but then he got, you know, where he wanted to do his own thing. His father and everything he had was the source. Think of that as the source, right? And he said, God, Father, I want to go and I want to do my own thing. And so I want you to think about it in your life sometimes. If God was the source in any time in your life, if we've walked away or went away from the source, we might not have went to God and said, hey, God, give me my stuff. We might not have said it exactly like him, but Everybody in here has strayed away in one way or another, or another. Amen? Amen. Uh, Marley, you can go ahead and read 13 through 16. Not long after that, the younger son got, all, got together all he had, set off for the distant country, and then squandered his wealth in wild living. After he spent everything, there was a severe famine in the whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to the citizens of that country who sent him into the fields to feed the pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating. 
but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against the heavens and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. All right. So he set off to go off and do his own thing. He wandered off and he went to party. He went to live his life. He went to, you know, do whatever. But then the funds or the, the, the good life that he thought he was going it ran out. So then he got to the point where he had to go and, 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 and uh, ask others. So he went in the pig, he asked other servants, can you help me? Can you give me something to eat? There was a famine in the land, so he didn't have anything to eat. But when you think about it, he was going to others who was in the same situation as him. So... If we're in trouble, should we go to our brother and our sister who are in the same situation as us? Or who should we go to? Who should we turn to first? God. And God is the source. God is the source. So when the younger son was in need, he went to others for help. They were in the same position as he was. And when he got in trouble... Um, I'm sorry, when we tend to get in trouble, we go to others for help. Once he got sick and tired of being sick and tired, he recognized that he needed to do something different. He came to himself, and he realized that he needed to go back to his father's because he asked himself, he asked himself, how many of my father's servants? He thought about it. At home, I have everything I need. All I need to do is go back to the source. All I need to do is go back to my father's house where I had everything. Just go back to the source. And then if you get back to the source where the access is, then life will be better. So what do I mean by access? Access he was born into the kingdom. Amen? His dad was a king, so everything that his father had was his already. He didn't realize that in the moment. He didn't realize that. He uh, uh, thought that there was more to life. And everybody in this room, if you've ever wandered off, let me see your hand. Everybody in here, I'm going to do like this. I'm going to do like this. I'm going to raise this foot. Okay, I'm going to tell you, we've all wandered off in one way, uh, in one way or another. Uh, Marley, I'm going to ask you to go ahead, sis, and read 20, verses 20 down through 21. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son and threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against the heavens and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Amen. Thank you. Uh, so, right here, how many times have we sinned and we did wrong, but then sometimes we're afraid to go back. We're afraid to, I know, let me talk about me. I am a person in long-term recovery, and I remember when I was in my addiction, even my mom, and especially God, because I knew God, right? I knew God, and I knew what was right and all of that, but I felt like I had sinned so much that I had just went too far that if I went back to God, he wouldn't uh, accept me, like that he wouldn't accept me, but I'm a living witness. I am an example of a prodigal son. And I believe all of us in here, you might not be in recovery, but you have your own story. And when I said, you know what, God, I need your help. I done been out here trying to do it on my own for too long. Going around a revolving door, doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. What is that? Insanity. So, God, I humble myself, as hard as that may be, I humble myself, God, and I need your help. And what did his father do? 
You might have thought his father would have been like, oh, nope, you wanted to go? Go ahead and live your life. You got this. You got this. But no, what did the father do? The father welcomed him with open arms. So if there is anyone in this room, anyone watching at home, if you think that you have went too far or done too much or sinned too much, mm -mm. God has welcomed you. Come back to the source. The source is God. The source, God the Father, amen? God the Father. Come back to the source because that's where we have access. Access, amen? All right, and uh, Miss Marley, will you go ahead and read verses 22 through 24? But the father said to his servants, quick, bring me the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let us have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. And so not only did uh, uh, the father accept his son, but his father gave him the best. Amen. He gave him the best, the ring, the fattened calf. Go and get the best robe. Go get the best of everything. So, no, God doesn't say, oh, no, stay away from me. You did too much. He say, come back and let me give you the best. I'm a child of God, and I'm happy about that. How about you? I'm happy. I'm, I'm grateful that I know today that if I make a mistake or if I mess up, if I do something wrong, that I am not put out of the kingdom. I'm still accepted. All I have to do is humble myself. All we have to do is humble ourselves. Amen? Amen. And meanwhile, no, Miss Marley, I'm going to let you go ahead and read. Oh, wait, you know what? Let me say one thing about that dead. The younger son, he was dead. And so by dead, it means to have left the access that he had at home of his father and went out to the world and ended up having to work for somebody else and begging other people for help. That is what we mean by dead in this sense. Amen? Amen. And, but the father still showed grace. So just as the father showed grace to his younger son, just as our Heavenly Father will show grace to us. All right, Miss Marley, if you would go ahead and read um, verses 25 through 27. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came, to, came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the ser servants and asked him, what was going on? Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. Amen. I'm going to go ahead and read through to the end. Okay. Brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours who has squandered your property with prostit or property with prostitutes comes home, you kill the fattened calf for him. My son, the father says, you are always with me and have everything I have is yours. But we, we had to celebrate and be, get, be glad because his brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Amen. Amen. He is alive again. So the older son had the wrong spirit when the younger son returned home. He got angry. He got jealous. He got like, what in the world is this? He been gone doing his own thing. He left you. And I've been here working hard, slaving in the fields, working for you. God, or dad, I've been working for you. But he got angry because what he perceived as the other son's access. This can be the same with some people who've been in the faith longer. They might think about all the years that they've been serving the Lord and they're not getting a big celebration. The thing that they're missing out is they are always, always, have always been with the Father. What the younger, what the younger brother demanded was a bucket of water and the older brother, he lived in the well. I'm going to slow down and I'm going to say that one more time. Let's think about that. The younger brother, he wanted his portion, 
was just a bucket of water. But that older brother who stayed around, he lived in the well, but see, he didn't realize that he lived in the, the whole well where your brother's getting this little, little bit. He getting that little bit. But you live in the well. You have access to all. Everything that your father has is already yours. So a lot of times, y'all, we think about when we hear the prodigal son story, we automatically think about that son that, that left home and came back and the father welcomed him with, with open arms and thank God for that. But I want us to think a little bit deeper on being that older son. What about that older son? That older son, he was so upset. He was so just taken back, didn't want to participate, didn't want to go out in the field and dance and have a good time, celebrate his brother because of what his perceived access was. You guys, we have access to the kingdom, to the kingdom, right? And sometimes we might stray off and go take our little bucket of water and have a good time with our little bucket of water. But when we come home and return to the source, and we realize, we change our way of thinking and say, you know what? I have something much bigger that's eternal. It almost makes me want to cry. Because sometimes we, we, get, we get stuck in that bucket of water. Let's not get stuck, right? And let's realize who, what is it? Whose we are, who we are, and whose we are. We are children of the most high king. So if we were to compare this father and what he uh, access that his sons had, imagine your asset access. And I don't care who you are in here, who you are at home, no matter what, how little or how big your sin was, you have access to the kingdom. Instead of thinking that he was a slave to his father, that older son started to realize that he had everything his, that everything his father had was already his. He just had to start living like it. Amen. I'm going to ask now, we're going to, this is the part where we're going to um, uh, interact and we're going to hear from you if you'd like. Which son? do you identify with? And you don't have to, there's not one to answer out loud, but just think about it. Do I identify with the, the prodigal son or do I uh, identify with the older son, the younger son or the um, older son? Both, yes, amen. <laughs> hey, Diana, all right. <laughs> okay, now let's think about this. I want an example from some, if you don't mind, um, what part of life, have you seen someone get rewarded and you felt like you deserved it and they didn't? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, you working? Oh, uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, my name is Terenisha. Um, hey, Terenisha. I felt like. <clears throat> Since I had been working my recovery, I felt like I deserved to get my kids back. And, you know, seeing other people get their kids and stuff, I, I kind of, I kind of felt like I, like I was mad at God. Like I've been doing my part. Why can't I have my kids? You know, so I can relate to the the older brother. I also can relate to the younger brother too. Mm -hmm. Um. Just being like in my addiction and stuff, um, running off and turning my back on my family, and you know, but then I humbled myself and and I went back to the source and and I'm grateful. Thank you, thank you for sharing. One more in the back, and then we're gonna move on. I can relate also. You know what? Now that you said that, I think I've been a little bit of both. You know, the uh, uh, older brother and the younger brother. Go ahead, Ma. Hello, my name is Carmen. Hey, Carmen. All right, I have something to read, Lost and Found. Jesus declares that he is the seeker of the lost. He tells three stories of lost items in Luke, a sheep, a coin, and a son. 
Each is found in the occasions of cause for rejoicing. Lots of items can be lost, our hourglasses, our keys, our pets, even our youth and our souls. Sometimes we feel as though we lost our wits, and at times we know we lost our sense of humor. We can lose our way, our hope, our sense of, our, of ourselves. Time and space can disappear on us. Opportunities can dissipate. A battle can be lost. We can be lost to the world as it is forgotten. We can be a lost cause or experience a lost weekend, one spent in desolate living. Take an inventory of what you have lost in your life recently or something you lost long ago, but still feel emptiness about. Prayfully ask God what you can find which the loss that will be, enable you to rejoice, not because of the loss, but because God takes things that you have strayed away from us and marvelously restores them to us in ways we might not immediately recognize or appreciate. Amen. Thank you, Carmen. Thank you. All right. The next question is, and this is for anybody in the room, uh, what lessons did you learn from this story and how can you apply it to your own life? Miss Ariana. Hi, Ariana. Um, in my addiction, at the time, I felt as if my family didn't care. And my brother used to ride around looking for me, looking for me, and I used to hide from him. And then finally I told him to tell aunt, my aunt to pray, a powerful prayer to, to re redeem me from my addiction, you know, to remove me from the devil's pit. And I felt so good to see that my family do care, you know, and I'm here today. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank you for sharing. We got one more up front, and then we're going to have somebody from this side. I might just point you out. Yes. Hi, my name is Barbara Lumpkin. Hi, Barbara. Um, and I'm grateful this morning for being here, and God been ahead of, of my life. Um, and my father, when he was living, um, he was a preacher, you know, and he let me know, he always told me that I was like the prodigal child. And I didn't quite understand the meaning of it. I read the story in the Bible, but I didn't quite understand the meaning of it still. And no matter what, when you go to the Bible, you always find a new meaning to a story. No matter how many times you read it, you get a different meaning of it. And so it just so happened that was one that's one story my dad always t told me, and so it, it it was meaning to it when you went to it this morning. I thank God for that, that uh, moving right along. So it's like you know my family, the rest of my family. My dad was my number one go-to guy. You know what I'm saying? The chili them of, of me, and it's like all the, I was like the black sheep of the family. Yet nobody else had issues like I did. And you know, and it's like I will always stray away, always stray away. And I didn't quite understand that. I'm like, when dad, when will this be over? When will this be over? He's he's he said he said you he said you like you you're the prodigal child, you're the prodigal child. And I'm like, Dad, I don't I don't quite get this. He said, You're the prodigal child, you're the prodigal child. And you know, and then so you know, but for some reason it always it, it, it's that seed that was in my heart, that seed that was in my heart. You understand what I'm saying? When the seed is planted, it is there, and you know what God has for you, it is gonna be for you, and it's gonna manifest its way in your life, no matter what. You no know what I'm saying? What. You know, and it's and it's, it's gonna see itself. It's gonna manifest. It's gonna gain truth in your life, and you will see yourself to just you know what. If it's gonna be, it's gonna be. You know. And I promise you that. And so it's like once it will, you know, and it's like I see myself and it's like no matter what, I still came back home every time. I came back home every time. And I didn't know why I came back home, but I always seen myself back at home. And it's like I told my, I told my father, I said, Lord, Dad, I said, I don't know what's going on with me, but some keep on pulling me back out there. You know, that seeing the flesh is something else. Mm -hmm. Seeing, you know, the spirit man and the flesh of man always have a way. But all thing I do know is that right now in my life, I found today, see that God has a plan for me in my life. And it has seen itself and manifest itself to here today that I am free. I am free from the bondage of sin. 
then I am free indeed. And that, that's that verse that's in the Bible, and I thank God for that right now. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Anybody else? Right here. Right here and then right there. You get me, you get me first. Yes. <laughs> My name's Ira. Hey, Ira. What, what this reminds me of is just the, the father himself about how he, I guess, mirrored the, our God, our father. And he just kept welcoming. He was always welcoming his son. Mm -hmm. And I felt like that's the way my father was for a while until I strayed. And then, you know, I'd get welcomed back. And it really taught me lessons about how to be. I've got three daughters. And they want to stray it at times. And, and I just had to know how to welcome them back mm -hmm. and not be judgmental. Amen. Thank you, Ira. <laughs> Hi, I'm Alan. Hey, Alan. Uh, one small detail in this piggybacks a little bit on what Ira said. One thing that always has stood out to me, it's a small detail though, is how it says, when the son was a long way off, mm -hmm. the father saw him and ran to him. So, and, and what that says to me is that the father was always looking. Even when the son left, the father never gave up hope. The father never stopped looking. The father was always ready. And the son didn't have to get all the way back home. The father would come and get him and bring him home. Amen. That's it. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that's so good. I'm getting so much out of this as well. I hope you are too. Really, really quick, Ayana, and as you're walking over there to Ayana, we don't have to put in so much work as he just shared. If we make up our mind, the Father is ready and willing to meet us right where we are. Amen? Amen. Ayana, really quick. Uh, hello, my name is Ayana. Hey. I am a long-term recovery. Um, uh, I realized that uh, the good son, where he was at home, Sometimes I don't uh, see what I have, a uh, good thing for me, uh, what is going on, good thing in my own life. Instead of focusing on uh, uh, a bad thing, I'm this, this is not working out, this is not this. But the, old, the good son say he have everything in there, but he not realize that he, he have it. So sometimes uh, look around and just uh, it help me to look back and to look and see that uh, there is good right there right now. Then uh, always, if you if we look, if we look, there is a lot of things to be grateful mm -hmm. right there right now. Then uh, 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 being focusing on the bad boy and uh, I said the bad boy. I'm sorry. <laughs> So that's all. Amen. Thank you, Ayana. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone who has shared. Think about, let's, let's just write where you are in your life right now. Even in the last year. Even with everything that we've been going through, God is still good. God is still with you. He will never leave us and he will never forsake us. Sometimes we will, but he's always there with open arms and like he shared, uh, uh, ready to meet us halfway. So I want you to just, if you take anything from this lesson, I want you to remember who the source is. God is your source. And that is where our access is. So say, I'm going back to the source. Nope, you got to say it like you mean it. You got to say it a little bit louder, okay? You got to say it like you mean it so he can feel it. I'm going back to the source. Because I'm going to get my access. I'm going back to the source. Anyway, my name is Jasmine. And I want you to keep repeating that as you go home. Just think about it. 
I am going back to the source. And it might not even be today in this moment. It might be next week something might come up, next month. But remember who your source is. Just come back to the Father. He is ready and waiting and, and, and happy to, to, to have you back with open arms. Amen? Amen. You guys have an excellent Sunday. Love you all.